レッドブランチサイクル Hi, Kunis. This is Kun. I always tell people that I play Grim Fantasy less than one to two hours a day, and everyone was like, "What the heck? How is it even possible to keep up with the developments if you only play for one hour a day?" So, Kun, what do you do every day, and what is the most efficient way to play Grim Blue Fantasy? First of all, I'd like to say thanks to Lucas. For the question, in fact, this is not the first time people ask me about this question. I will try to share you my daily routine today with a more logical approach and also three easy concepts to play Grim Blue Fantasy in a more efficient way. Grim Blue Fantasy is designed based on the structure of a pyramid. It is very similar to the food pyramid we all know. Which very much reflects the situations here in Grim Fantasy, but Foot Pyramid is not suitable here. I know you guys love Jita, so I have prepared a Jita Pyramid for you guys to savor. First, we need to break down all types of race or quests and categorize them based on the structure of this pyramid. Secondly, we need to break down the player base into a few groups according to player rank. In order for me to show you that no matter what your rank is or where you are standing on the pyramid, you only need to do the most basic things to play Grim Blue Fantasy in an efficient way. I personally think that the player base of Grim Fantasy is very similar with the breakdown of social economy in real life. However, we don't want a complicated lesson here, so I will just very, very roughly break them into three groups in this video. First, we have top 15 or top 15% of the players whose ranks are around 190 to 250. They are standing at the top of the pyramid, but the population is the smallest. They are looking at the finest things in the game. And then we have meter 35. 35% of the players whose ranks are around 120 to 189. They already have their basic needs fulfilled, and they are looking for something extra. Finally, we have bottom 50. 50% of the players. Whose ranks are around one to one hundred and nineteen, and they are trying to build a solid foundation. Meanwhile, we can also put all the quests or race into different brackets on the left hand side of the pyramid, based on the unspoken rules or minimum rank for player to join a ray and the minimum requirement to start this race. As you can see, the red highlights are the most important quests or raids, which you want to do as many times as possible, because they are the pillars of your strength. You need fathers, weapons, and materials from these quests to host all the other raids in the game or move further to a higher rank. These quests have the priority. I would always finish this quest first if I remember or if I have time. Arcarium is important because you only get one ticket to enter Arcarium every day. If you don't use it, it is going to be wasted. Casino is not a key, but the potions and the pills in the cage are valuable. So remember to exchange for these items every day. Free Ruby Gacha is a good source to obtain plus bonus. You don't want to miss it as well. Hard Plus, Omega, Impossible Omega, Omega 2, and Primus Trials. These are all the essential parts of this game, from pendants, animals to weapons. No matter you're a cash player or free-to-play player, you need a lot of resources from this quest to grow. Event dailies are also important because the rewards are usually crystals or gacha tickets. You don't want to miss them. The yellow ones on the list are less important, but they are crucial because we need items from this race to host high-level race and craft weapons. However, about the white color ones,、mm, they are in fact the least important quests because they are not necessity. You only need to touch them when you want to achieve certain goals or craft a certain weapon. Now you can see the answer very clearly. No matter how high your rank is. All you need to do is to focus on the most basic things, 
What's more, these quests, these necessities are all located at the bottom of the pyramid, which means everyone can complete these tasks effortlessly. If you are very busy with the work or school and you don't have much time to play, you can basically skip all these white or even yellow color quests because they're usually more time consuming. If you take me as an example, I don't play hard mode Lucy at all. Although it's very fun and challenging, I don't want and I have no intention to do it because it sometimes takes more than one hour to finish a Lucy Ray. If I do it six months later, I probably only need to spend something like 30 minutes to one hour to complete a Ray and we still get to enjoy the same items or drops. Honestly, I think we have to ask ourselves this question when we are playing a game. What is your goal? For me, my goal is very clear, just one goal. I want to perform well in the next guild war. So let's say the next guild war is going to have uh, fire bosses. I will try my best to boost and focus on my water grid for the next one or two months so that I won't become a burden to my guildies. The rest of the weapon grids can wait because there is no place or important event for me to use them. In short, we need to understand the reality. We need to be goal-driven but we also need to compromise at the same time. If we don't have the time or resources to become a pioneer or those top players, it is okay to wait or to progress slowly following our own pace. All in all, I believe the best players are those who know how to strike a balance between games and real life. We don't want to be a winner in games and a loser in real life. That's not how it works. Do you need like 500 Bamut horns to craft a weapon? Do you need 10 fully limit break fimbers to form a powerful water grid? Apparently, the answer is no. We should focus on what we need instead of what we want. You'll be able to save a lot of time if you can differentiate your needs and demands. If you are concerned about the time span and the efficiency, it is very crucial to play Grim Fantasy wisely. There are a few tips I would like to share with you guys. First, try not to solo. Going Kirito in Grim Fantasy is actually going John Wick on yourself. Solo is good. It helps you to understand raid mechanisms better, but it is very time consuming. Do it only when you are free. If you are too busy to play, try to secure the MVP and then ask the pups to finish the boss for you. Secondly, do responsible one punch. Use your bonito, huang long or simply focus on AT. One punch the boss and then move to the next raid. However, if you want to one punch, please be considerate. Make sure you can kill the boss yourself. This is especially useful on event dailies. Thirdly, try to be consistent. This is the golden rule of gacha and mobile games like Grim Fantasy. Spend 30 minutes every day for a week is more efficient than burning your livers on Saturday night for 10 hours non-stop. This is also the reason why we have daily and weekly pendant caps and daily quests here and there because the developer wants you to log in as regular as possible. Finally, be honest to yourself. If you are not in the mood to play, if you are tired, if you don't want to grind, take a rest my friend. Playing game is all about fun and pleasure. If it makes you suffer, it serves no purpose. To recap, Know your game, know yourself, and play like a pro. You can always refer to my GTA pyramid if you don't know what to do. It would be great if you could share your daily routine in the comment section below because I'm sure there are a lot of curious players who would like to learn from you and use your routine as a reference. Meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe to Kun's channel and ring the bell if you think this video is helpful. I would also love to hear more from you guys. Is there anything you want to see for the next video? Tell me about it and I will try to deliver. This is Kun. I wish you good luck. Bye.